Um, but we're going to conclude this first portion of our panels with a presentation by Dr. Gustafson. And I just butchered your last name. I'm so, I practice too. <laughs> um, but she works on diabetes at TransTech Pharma in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. So thank you. Hi. Um, I know I'm standing between you and lunch, so I will attempt to go quickly. Um, first, I wanted to go over briefly what I do, my job function, and it's actually fairly similar to what Steve was describing earlier. Um, when, in terms of clinical research, I'm a director of clinical research, and my responsibilities are to design, execute, interpret, and report clinical trial, clinical trial data. Um, this really starts with innovative clinical trial design and implementation. It's, it's, you know, it's important to have a really high quality protocol so that the answers you're getting are very reliable and you can depend on the results and the whole company can make go-no-go -go decisions based on your study. Um, one of my favorite parts of the job is the overall clinical development for the compounds. So, um, what I do is I lead matrix teams, um, which is comprised of the pharmaceutical sciences group, toxicology, regulatory, statistics, clin farm, um, and we design what studies we're going to do first in the clinic when we have a compound that has looked very good preclinically and has passed all of its um, toxicology screens. Then we decide to take it into the clinic, and my job is to decide what study we do first, is it going to be in patients or healthy volunteers, what will the biomarkers be, what will the doses be, how high will we dose, um, what are we looking to get out of the trial. And then an, another big part of this is the translational biomarker plan. So what I really like about my job is I, I, feed, I feed backwards into the preclinical space and I feed forward into the clinical space. So I'm trying to determine, I, I, get involved in project teams when they're still in the preclinical stage, and I decide, oh, this asset is very useful. I think um, the best biomarker for this uh, compound will be X, Y, or Z. Um, that compound, or that biomarker could have or could not have been validated in the clinic before. And if it is, it's, it's much easier to write a protocol and a plan and design go-no-go -no -go criteria. But if it's a particular very novel mechanism with biomarkers that are much more complicated, that aren't potentially circulating biomarkers, other issues. Um, you get to work with the preclinical teams and help them design their studies so that you have some guidance for the clinical plan as well. So it's a very fun part of the job. Um, a lot of this job is uh, writing, writing protocols, um, clinical study reports, investigator brochures, um, investigational new drug applications, which is where you go into the clinic for the first time and you give the evidence that you have that it's safe to go into the clinic and what you intend to do um, in publications. Uh, nowadays, industry is encouraging uh, publications more and more to get the word out there about their science and to get the community excited. So that's been really fun. Um, so just briefly how I got here, um, I did get my PhD at Vanderbilt in the Sherrington lab. And what I loved about that lab was that it was integrative physiology. So I was studying the whole animal and the whole disease state. Um, I'm not very molecularly oriented, but uh, that's what the IGP was really nice because I do at least understand that language now and can talk to scientists who are very <laughs> molecular oriented. Um, at the end of my PhD, Alan really encouraged me to think about what I want to do for my career, where I want to go long term. And so, I, as much as I loved the whole animal work that I did in his lab, I realized that I'd like to be even closer to um, drug development and, and making medicines for people. So I knew that I wanted to go into clinical research. And I also knew I wanted to go into a pharma company because I wanted to really make a difference and, and really be close to the patients. Um, so considering that, I did a postdoc in the Davis lab at Vanderbilt also. Um, where I got to do glycemic clamps in humans. It was very similar to what I was doing in the dog, but it was applying it to humans instead. Um, and I think what was very beneficial about that postdoc was glucose clamps are sort of the gold standard in diabetes. And so there, there aren't very many people who've done them and can do them well. And to have that background, I think, was very helpful and instrumental in helping me get my next position. 
Um, Vanderbilt actually has a really cool program called Masters in Clinical Investigation. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here at Vanderbilt right now. Um, I, while I was getting my postdoc, I took this master's class. And this master's course is really unique because it's primarily for MDs and PhDs who want to do clinical research. And what it is, is it's a few classes, but the majority of it is doing your postdoc and doing your research. And so it, it sort of fits together very nicely. And I learned um, all about the different phases of drug development in this course. Um, I learned biostatistics, um, epidemiology, uh, uh, grant writing, which I, isn't applicable now for me, but very useful for the rest of those in the class. Um, and this class is, act, I mean, actually very well known. Um, when I was in the program, there were some people from BMS whose BMS had paid for them to come down and learn about clinical trial investigation. So I, I think it really was a bonus, um, especially being a PhD, trying to get into a very MD-centric world. It was very nice to have an, a little extra set of credentials and, and really prove that I was determined to do clinical research. So after that, I was looking for a job, and I did what career advisors would probably tell you never to do. I started cold calling people. What I did was I, um, I did internet searches for diabetes and clinical and Pfizer, and diabetes and clinical and Merck, and diabetes and clinical. I pulled up all the papers I could find. I got the names of the, the corresponding authors, and I started um, emailing them my CV, my career goals. Um, I got a call one day from someone at Pfizer saying, I wasn't going to contact you because you don't have any pharma experience and you're very green, but I got your resume from 11 different people, so I figured I better call. <laughs> so it paid off. <laughs> Um, the reason I chose Pfizer was I did go to several different companies. I interviewed at Merck and BMS, and Pfizer um, really has a good career path for a PhD in clinical research. Um, they also have PharmDs and MDs as well in clinical research. Some of the other companies I interviewed at, one of the companies told me that they've never had a PhD doing clinical research, but maybe I could label some tubes for them or, or something. <laughs> So I think Pfizer was very progressive, and I liked that about it, and, and they were a very good fit. Um, when I was there the first few years, I was a clinical research scientist, where I mostly designed the protocols and analyzed the data and wrote the studies. And then the last few years, I was promoted to clinical lead, where I was in charge of the entire program, start to finish, what we were doing in the clinic. And just one more comment is, is I went into phase one uh, to phase two research. And what this is, this is where a compound is first developed and first goes into the clinic up until it reaches proof of concept and you know that it works the way it's supposed to. After that, you sort of hand it over to the phase three guys who do the large scale clinical trials. And when I was initially looking for positions, I really wanted to get the large phase three experience. I thought that'll be so fun to have multiple countries and, and do these very large trials. Um, but I kept getting positions for phase one and two, and I realized it's because with a PhD, that's actually an area that you're very well suited for because you're very close to the preclinical group, you get to work directly with them, and the more I've done phase one and phase two, it's actually the most exciting part because that's where you really get to test your mechanism. You get to design interesting studies, you get to do methodology studies, and um, it really is so exciting because things can change from one day to the next. You know, a publication will come out that, that requires you to revamp your whole strategy or you'll get new toxicology data that requires a major change to your plan. Um, so it has been very, very interesting. Um, last year, I left Pfizer and I went to Transtech Pharma. It's a small biotech in North Carolina. And so I can compare and contrast big pharma with small biotech if you want later. They're, they are very different, um, but I'm really enjoying my time at TransTech. I um, am leading the diabetes group and ultimately responsible for all of our diabetes compounds, making it through the clinic and, and then trying to partner when we get further along. So it's been a very good experience and I've learned a lot there. 
And I just had a little bit of advice to close with. Um, the first one is to be persistent because, um, you know, if, if you keep looking for things and keep your name out there, you, you will get stuff. I know today's job market can be a little intimidating, but it, all it takes is persistence, I think. Um, take on new challenges. Anything new you can do to um, broaden your horizons and enhance your career is very useful. And then the last one, be yourself. Uh, we heard from other speakers that it's really important to capitalize on your strengths. And I can't emphasize that enough. Um, when I first joined Pfizer, um, I'm very much of an introvert and very quiet. And I kept getting told, you need to speak out more. You need to make your opinions know. You need to tell everyone what the deal is and make sure they do it. And you need <laughs> So I tried to do that. And it wasn't me. It wasn't comfortable. Um, it did help me grow a little bit. I, I learned to be more outgoing and, and get along better in the corporate world. Um, but a year after that, there was a big reorganization, and the qualities that management hadn't appreciated in my personality initially, the new management did. So you, you can't please everyone, and you can't change to try and fit into a corporate mold. You have to just capitalize on your particular strengths and your um, team building, and the way you like to run things. So that's all. Thanks.